Hi everyone and welcome to this quick and easy session on InfiTQ Python MCQs. For those of you who don't know, Infosys is conducting the InfiTQ round, uh, the most famous round, the start of all the placement rounds. Uh, you can check out more about how you can prepare for InfiTQ MCQs over here. Not only MCQs but everything. So this is the Edis preparation pack. Uh, but for more details on InfiTQ itself, you can check it out on the Infosys website and they have many more details over there. Uh, for those of you who don't know, InfiTQ is conducted in many rounds. The first round is the uh, screening test which is going to happen on 2nd and 3rd of April of 2021 depending on which date you have chosen your slot. If you have not yet registered, then please go and check it out already. I, I'm not sure if the registration is still open but you can probably check it out. So the screening test is there. Uh, the screening test consists only of MCQs, MCQs based on aptitude, based on uh, Python or, or Java, depending on which language you chose, based on SQL. And uh, yeah, those are the major things that you can expect in uh, the MCQs. After that is the certification exam. In the certification exam, you actually have to give coding round as well. You have to actually do coding questions in that. Uh, so keeping in mind both the screening test as well as the certification test, what are all of the subjects and what are all of the questions and syllabus that you can get. We have designed an InfiTQ preparation pack just for you. It contains of all of the major questions uh, across asked across all of the years of InfiTQ. It's been like about two, three years since they started. So we have all of the previous years questions on Python, on Java, on SQL. We have more than 20 coding questions. Um, directly from InfiTQ as well as uh, a lot of coding questions which we have developed uh, as a practice round for them. We have five mock tests. In fact, a mock test is going on as we speak on the platform for all the paid students. Uh, we have mentor support for coding questions. Uh, forums for doubt solving. So even if you're stuck any, any time in your coding questions or in any MCQs, you will always get some help out there. And it's, this is the perfect thing for screening test and certification. Like last year, we had thousands of students uh, prepare with this and many of them got cleared the screening round, went to the certification test. So many of them actually went all the way till the upgrade test and cleared that also. So they are going into the advanced packages. So yeah, we've, we've been there. We've seen InfiTQ earlier and uh, we are here to help you out uh, with all of the material that's there. Uh, today I'm going to pick up one specific question from this InfiTQ course. So uh, the link as, as we said is mentioned in the description below. If you click on that link, uh, this is what will open up. This is the course page that's going to open up for all of you. Right? It's the course page. On the right side you'll get an uh, intro video. On the left side you see this try one free module. Just click that uh, over here and you'll get the course. So here uh, you have the um, uh, the syllabus for the MCQs, uh, sorry, syllabus for InfiTQ overall, including coding questions. And here I'm going to click on try one free module. Now again, this is a paid course. So we have given one free module here as a uh, practice, uh, but the remaining parts are paid. We have MCQs on SQL, Java, Python. We have coding questions on all of the topics. And we also have tutorials on SQL. Uh, so apart from SQL MCQs, we also have SQL tutorials uh, because um, you know, many of you don't really know how to do SQL. So we thought instead of making a new course on SQL, you can just avail it as part of this course itself. So you can get all of the information of that and all of the information on SQL over here. Uh, I'm going to pick up one InfiTQ Python MCQ. As I mentioned again, you can see more than 100 MCQs over here, more than 100 MCQs here, uh, more than 100 MCQs here on Java and more than 100 MCQs on SQL. So yeah, and most of them are on the pattern in which MCQ, in which InfiTQ asks. I'm going to pick up this one uh, that's InfiTQ MCQ number 10. Uh, now these MCQs that I'm going to share with you are based on the kind of concepts that InfiTQ likes to ask. Uh, some lot of students ask me, sir, you gave us this question, but the exact question did not come. Yeah, yeah I know. What we've done is we've gone through all of the previous year's questions. We've we've uh, you know taken them modified them a little bit and put them on their disk platform so you can practice for that but we've also seen what are the major concepts so in an nftq question you will get like five concepts together we've broken down the concepts and we have created an mcq specifically for each concept to help you learn better that's that's the kind of philosophy we are following over here so that's why you might see that oh sir the question is very small yeah but in that small question you have a very big concept over here and if now that small concept is attached to another question you will now be able to understand how this concept works so that's why you'll find like some of these questions a little different from InfiTQ, uh, the final questions and some of them will be exactly similar to InfiTQ. so without further delay let's let's get started with this sample InfiTQ mcq question uh, this question seems to be on dictionaries so what will be the output of the following code snippet i'll zoom in a little bit but yeah what is going to be the output on the following code snippet um, we have over here a dictionary of john 40 and peter 45 and what you need to do is d.keys will return to you an iterable 
of the keys it's going to return to you an iterable of the keys and if you apply the list function to that keys uh, or to any iterable rather you're get you're going to get a list of that so the keys are john and peter so it's either this or this obviously this is a tuple so i will let that go so it's this only the other ones have values they don't only have keys so hence it's the first one so that's the first question uh, for the second one is the following python code valid a is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 this is a set b is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 this is also a set c is equal to dot a uh, a dot is superset b uh, well this is actually a valid function of sets and if you may not believe it but python has extensive support for set arithmetic things like union intersection all of the stuff we have studied you know in our school or probably in our college earlier uh, it has you know proper support for that now this will return a boolean value is superset of b uh, a is not a superset of b rather b is a superset of a so this is going to be false over here yeah let's go to the next one a is equal to 3 comma 4 7 comma 5 okay instead of 3 comma 4 rather a is a set and as set elements it has 3 4 and it also has another set now remember only those elements that are hashable are possible to be in a set inside a set and most of the times the hashable elements are immutable elements so st your string is immutable that is something that cannot change a value that cannot change by itself a string is an immutable element uh, you know you have integers you have uh, you know yeah that those are ma mainly it uh, you have tuples tuples are you know immutable objects uh, so for those immutable ones only can be part of a set now set is not immutable although set contains immutable or hashable objects a set itself is not immutable because you can keep changing the values in a set so i can't really store a set inside another set so whatever this this actually is going to give me a uh, you know is going to give me an error and i said yeah subsets aren't allowed exactly you can't have a set inside a set uh, that's not allowed so that's what this is going to be uh, is the following python code valid a is equal to 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 and then a well no this isn't actually uh, valid uh, one second is this valid let me just check uh, yeah sorry this will be valid because this is called as packing and unpacking if you this is the tuple concept of packing and unpacking and this indeed will be valid uh, what happens is when you separate it by commas this and all these values are packed together into a tuple so when you print it you will get 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 so uh, this is called as packing and unpacking values and yes you will get this over here okay you won't get this this is a list you won't get that only two is printed and no you will not get too many values to unpack you, you're not going to get that as well you're going to get this all combined into a tuple let's go to the next one what will be the output of the following python code l1 is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 this is a list l2 is 456 a list l3 is 4789 a list for xyz in zip of l1 l2 l3 okay to understand this question what we need to understand is what is this zip right what is this zip thing over here what zip does in if i have to tell you in uh, in a lot of short format uh, what zip does is it attaches iterables respective iterables of their own elements it attaches them together so for example here l1 l2 l3 they are all iterables they're a list a list is an iterable uh, you have 1 4 and 7 being attached together because they are at the same index 2 5 8 will be attached together and 3 6 9 will be attached together so what's going to happen is when you print x 147 will be attached together 258 will be attached together and 369 will be attached together now the question arises will they be attached as tuples will they be attached as a list will they be attached will they not get attached as an error no they will be attached and they're just going to be attached normally as is because what does a print statement do a print statement prints and if there's a comma it gives a space so what it did is it's printed one with a space four with a space seven on the next line it printed 258 and on the next line it printed 369 so that's how it works um let's go to the next one okay what is the output of the following python code a is equal to 5 comma 4 b is equal to 1 2 4 5 now as i mentioned earlier python so here a is a set of 5 4 and b is a set of 1 2 4 5 now as i mentioned earlier python is very good at set arithmetic and actually the less than is part of the set arithmetic the less than over here is not to be confused with the less than of uh, you know logical sorry relational operators of integers or strings here the less than is actually subset so what we are asking is is a a subset of b don't go by lexicographic that you will compare 5 and 1 then you will compare 4 and 2 no we don't have anything like that first things first the set itself um anyways I, I, let's let me not go into a tangent but my point here is uh, what you have over here is 
you have 5 comma 4 which is a subset because 4 and 5 are both elements that exist in b therefore a is a subset of b and you will get a true value one more small input you see this three uh, greater than signs here this means that this is being done on an interpreter so when you see this here don't be worried it's uh, it's not a uh, syntax error rather it's an interpreter that means that you know we didn't have to print a less than b it will automatically give you uh, the it will execute a less than b and tell you the value because it's on the python interpreter let's go to the next one uh, what will be the output of the following python code okay uh, here what's happening is L which is a list is 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 and here this is a list comprehension uh, uh, list comprehension concept so basically what we're doing is for each x in L do x and 1 when I say and 1 it's a bitwise 1 so 1 and 1 will be 1 so whichever one of these is 1 they may be our correct answer 2 and 1 will be 0 why because 2 is 0 1 0 and 1 is 0 0 1 when you take the bitwise and of each corresponding bit you are going to get 0 so I can eliminate this one over here what about 3 and 1 3 and 1 is again going to be 1 right 3 and 1 because you have 1 1 and and 0 1 so 1 and 1 the least significant bit becomes 1 1 and 0 becomes 0 so it's going to be become 1 again right so that leaves us with this one so the answer is B over here 7 B um, basically what it did was for each x in L it did, it took x and 1 you could have done print x for x in L also uh, okay not print x for x in L that would not return anything we'll, we'll see that in a bit but my point is you could have done x uh, x plus 2 for x in L and it would have returned you a different uh, list and so on okay let's look at this the value of the expressions 4 divided by 3 into bracket 2 minus 1 is it the same or not okay um, here brackets are changing the order of execution so it becomes 4 this is float division float division so it becomes 4 divided by 3 into 2 minus 1 so first this is executed so it becomes 4 divided by 3 by 2 minus 1 is 1 3 into 1 is 3 4 divided by 3 will be some 1.33333 uh, and this one it is 4 divided by 3 will happen first here uh, because they are not in brackets so from left to right it will happen 4 divided by 3 will happen first which is 1.33333 into brackets of 2 minus 1 which is again 1 so although the order of execution was different they both landed up at 1.333333 so hence this is true uh, let's look at this one which of the following is an invalid statement abc is equal to so here what happens is abc is an is a variable name and this is the value that we are going to give it so that's fine um, th this is completely fine with us uh, the second one uh, one second yeah the second one a slash a space b space c okay this is wrong because the spaces don't really do anything for us so this one is wrong uh, a comma b comma c this is unpacking and packing this is not a big deal this is uh, unpacking and packing uh, and a underscore b underscore c this is just one integer whose value is this so that's fine it's only this one that's uh, you know not there okay let's go further which of these is not a core data type lists is a core data type dictionary is a core data type pupils is a core data type class is not why is it not that's just a definition class is not a core data type uh, you can't really define you know you just don't have the core, core data type of class that's that's pretty much it uh, uh, it's it's just not that's all i can say uh, let's go to 11 uh, suppose list 1 is 2445 133 12454 123 what is max of list 1 okay this is pretty simple question you just have to find the maximum number in this list 1 Probably not something that will come in an infinity queue, but still, you know, it's, it's just a very basic revision. Maximum of list one is one, two, four, five, one, two, four, five, four. Go to the next one. Which of the, what will be the output of the following Python code? Print abcdef dot find cd equal equal to cd in abcdef. All right. Uh, okay. This is tricky. Let's, let's look at it one by one. Um, okay. What we are supposed to do here is abcdef dot find cd. So in this dot find cd, it's going to take up the um, the index, right? So what's the index over here, right? The index is zero one two. Okay, it's uh, it's zero one two. I believe it takes up the uh, the index of it, right? Even I'm trying to remember. Okay, this one we know for sure cd in abcdf is going to return as true because cd does exist in abcdef okay but what this find is going to do is it's going to return the index so you're going to get 0 1 2 so you're going to get c as the index over here so is 2 equal equal to true 
no two is not equal equal to true so it will become false over here okay had this dot find returned a true that would have been a different story but this dot find returns an index and uh, you know th that dot find index is uh, not going to help you out over here right uh, because it will be like this becomes true sorry this becomes two is equal equal to true so two is not equal equal to true hence you'll get a false value over here okay finally uh, not finally we have another seven to go Suppose list one is one comma three comma two. What is list one into two? So what list one into two will do is it will not multiply every number into two. Rather, it's going to just take one three two and one three two. Basically, it's going to take this list and duplicate that list two times. That's it. It's just going to duplicate it two times, um, or duplicate it once actually. If you wanted to do multiply each number by two, then you should have used list comprehension. Go to the next one. What is the output of print k in the following Python code snippet? Okay. K is equal to print i for i in my string if i not in a e i o u. Okay, the way to read a list comprehension is you start from here. Okay, if i not in a e i o u. Okay, this is what is going to be applied, right? To um, one second, let's read it fully. Print i for i in my string a e. Okay, what it's going to do is it's going to execute this print i for each i in my string. If that i is not in a e i o u, so whatever that my string, we don't know what that my string is. Whatever that my string, if i is not a e i o u, then it is going to print i. So basically, if i is not a vowel, it's going to print i. But very important thing to note here, we said k is equal to print i. Now print itself does not return anything. The print statement itself returns a non value. now and what we are saying is whatever the print statement returns is what we are going to store in this k so if we are going to print k we are just going to get a list of nuns that's it i am just going to get none values because this print i returns nothing had it been i for i in then that's a different story but here we will get a list of nuns because this print i returns nuns over here let's go to the next one to retrieve the character at index 3 from string s equal to hello which command do we execute um right and we are saying multiple answers are allowed now typically speaking to get the character at index 3 we would have just done s of 3 right but the thing is s square bracket 3 is just not available anywhere the second one that most people don't know there is a function called underscore underscore get item underscore underscore uh, you can use that one to get the in value at index 3 uh, so as i mentioned these are some concepts that come in in ptq uh, they may be part of a bigger problem so we've broken them down so that you can revise particularly uh, for that concept so this is a concept you can actually get the item at the third index by using this getter over here so the next one what will be the output of the following python statement so always when you have a function like this start with the most inner mode function what is odd b odd b is going to give you the ascii value of small b then you are adding one to it and then you are converting that to a character so that will be small c right odd b ascii value of it uh, plus 1 will be the ascii value of c which you are converting to a character so you will get c small c let's go to the next one uh, what will be the output of the following python code whenever you get a question like this don't start by reading the class always start by reading how the class is being called so you have tester 12 tester 12 means you are initializing this this class with 12 this object with 12 so we have self dot id is equal to str of id so that means 12 got converted to to a string and then got stored as an id and what you're doing is printing temp dot id which is you're printing 12 itself you're not going to print 224 because this id is equal to 224 but that's not self's id Okay, that is not the ID of self. That is, it's not attached to the object. This is the uh, object. Twelve uh, is the one that's attached to the object. Let's go to the next one. Which of the following results in a syntax error? We have to read this one carefully. Uh, once upon a time, so here the double quotes are there and they are inside here, and then we have single quotes outside. So this is possible. Double quotes inside a single quotes is possible. This will not be a syntax error. He said yes, yes, single quote, single quote, and outside double quotes. This is also fine. Here we have three backslash and then a single quote. But the backslash will escape that single quote, so we actually need another single quote after this. Um, so this one it will give you a syntax error. And over here uh, we have that's okay. This is fine because we have double quotes outside. We can have as many single quotes inside as we want. So that's fine. Let's go to the next one. What's the output of the following Python code? Yeah, this is also a very good dictionary concept. Uh, this is another way of printing the uh values of a dictionary not the keys but the values of a dictionary see what's happening here is 
we first create a dictionary where the for the key p we have addist and for the key q we have cool now what we're doing is you're saying substitute the p and q dot format star star d basically what we're telling is go and check out the p and q keys and substitute whatever is the value of those keys over here and what's the value of those keys it's addist and cool the, those are the values of the keys over here right so that's what we're going to print um what will be the output of the following python code print uh x y y z x y z x y y uh what we need to print is dot count y y and two okay um what does two mean two means from index two onwards right so you have zero one and two this is from this index onwards so let that is uh you know zero one two from this index till here how many times does y y occur and y y occurs only one time right y y occurs here only one time at this point right so we will print one over here let's submit it and check yeah we got all 20 or 20 uh that's nothing to be super proud about because uh, i myself i'm aware of the questions but uh you have to now log on and practice all the remaining questions i've shared one question full answer key with you uh but now you can go around and check and let's say you didn't get the answer you can always go and click this check view my previous attempt and find out uh let's find out what's the explanation for this dot find right here as you said as i said that the function find returns the position of the substring in the given string whereas the in keyword returns a boolean type so this one was returning some substring uh the position of the substring which would have been two uh second index and this the other one is returning true or false so if you compare an integer with a boolean you're going to get a false value right so like that you will get explanation for all of the questions over here uh please do go ahead and try out i shared one set with you just like that we have another uh 11 sets 11 or 12 sets with you so you guys can go ahead and check those out uh where to check it out it's also it's in the description below and you can also check it out on this link over over here uh thanks all for joining in today if you have any more suggestions of how we can improve these videos or anything please do let us know in the comments below don't forget to like uh this video also share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel because we are going to do a mega revision marathon soon for screening test so make sure you subscribe to this channel for that thanks everybody for joining in today and i'll see you all next time all the best everybody thank you